Virgin Galactic likes to brag that their missions to space emit far less CO2 than the average flight from, let's say, New York to London. And they're right, but is that the real problem? It turns out that these space tourism flights release a lot of black carbon into our stratosphere, which is extremely dangerous because actually it's much more dangerous than CO2. According to one study, black carbon emitted into the stratosphere by rockets would absorb 100 time, 100,000 times as much energy as the CO2 emitted by those rockets. And this is a problem that we're just only starting to realize with the space tourism. You know, this industry is starting to burgeon and black carbon has not been studied that much or the, the release of black carbon into the upper atmosphere hasn't it's been studied as much. Certainly not a buzzword yet on the news. Black carbon. Yes. I have no fear of black carbon yet. The media has not yet told me how much They're I They're gonna should tell fear you about safe carbon. black carbon. Safe black yeah. carbon? Clean black Clean carbon. Clean black carbon. Which is not true and a misnomer on any level. But um, according to Darren Tuhi, a professor of atmospheric and oceanic sciences at the University of Colorado Boulder, He's saying that if you put the black carbon into the stratosphere, it's, it's extremely dangerous. It stays up there for years. Now, if you don't know what black carbon is, it's, well, if you've ever seen a coal burning stove or sat behind a truck releasing black smoke into the air, that was it. It's, it comes from the incomplete combustion of fossil fuel, biofuel, biomass, and it's emitted directly into the atmosphere and absorbs about a million times more energy than CO2. It's usually okay when it's in the lower atmosphere, you know, five miles or less closer to the Earth's surface, because it, it gets broken up by precipitation. Oh, but at okay. levels in the upper atmosphere where there is no precipitation, there's nothing to clear it out. There's no atmospheric changes at that level as far as, you know, clouds, weather that we experience here that would be able to move it. It, it, it's going to stay there for years and years and block out the sun's energy. Now, how big an industry is space tourism right now? Right I, now, not so much. We're seeing like 70 flights a year. This is what this article estimated. But in the near future, maybe, let's say a decade, let's be kind of conservative, I guess, at least more conservative than Mars One, th that's expected to turn into a thousand, a thousand flights a year. As That's industry, a lot more flights. Yeah, as the industry uh, ramps up. And it's something we don't know what will happen if that much black carbon is in the upper atmosphere yet at all, because essentially what this would be doing is engineering that, that experiment. We, we have no idea, and more, more study needs to go into this, more research needs to go into this, uh, because when it happens, we don't know what, I mean, there will certainly be climate change, but how much? and is, is there a way for us to fix it or reverse bioengineer it? At this stage right now, do you know how many regulations or what regulatory board there are on these types of flights? Well, Those are relatively new. I believe the FAA is the organization still responsible for the environmental impacts. But this, you're right, this is a very new industry. So, you know, we don't really know what black carbon will do. So we haven't really put very many restrictions on it yet as to how much it can be released into the the upper atmosphere even because this was never talked about with regular old NASA emissions no well it was so much less I mean sure <laughs> it'll it'll release some kind of emissions into the air but it's at a much smaller level and it's it's hard for us to use that as a case study for what would happen if we're launching a lot of voluntary fun space trips so it doesn't seem like the companies that are doing these uh, upper atmosphere trips are yet concerned about this. No, because they were, well, we're looking, we're studying carbon dioxide they were looking at, and they're like, wow, we, we got it, we're good. But no, we maybe aren't good. We probably should not be doing this until we understand what it will do to our atmosphere. Is, are any of these companies addressing that issue? Saying um, that our fuel is better, or our method is better, or we have the least Black carbon well, footprint. Well, XCOR is saying our fuels are almost completely free of particulate matter. They have 20 to 40 times less aromatics. 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 They think of onions. Then traditional rocket fuels and hundreds, if not thousands, of times less particulate matter than hybrids or solids. So the concern about carbon and other particles is moot for us. But that is coming from them. Uh, I think we do need some peer-reviewed studies. Yeah, I as wouldn't to what trust would a company yeah, that sounds like a porn site. XCOR. Yeah. 
No. And anytime, anytime someone says hundreds, if not thousands, those aren't numbers. Like, okay, those well, th is it hundreds numbers. or is it thousands? Because that's, that's different a big difference. By a magnitude, thousands could be hundreds of thousands. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know this yet, um, but this definitely needs to be something that we pay more attention to and research as space travel becomes more and more of a consumer market. Um, we've talked about this before. With remember, we were talking about who would own Mars. Yes. Would we colonize Space Mars? law. These are all kind of, to go back to our Star Trek story, exploration. Things we don't know yet. Things we haven't decided yet because we've never been there. But To boldly go to other planets and mess up their atmospheres too. And mess up too. the current one. Please don't mess up the current one. Look into black carbon.